Uh, prayer request today? Yes. Uh, Stephen Johnson spoke to him last night. Uh, something's going on with his heart. Uh, irregular heartbeat. And it's getting real rapid. Uh, I didn't talk to him this morning, but I guess they said they were going to do some sort of surgery. So I'll, be, I'll, I'll get back with them and check it out. Um, see what happens. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Plus, he handled his loss of both hands. Yeah, pretty rough. Yeah, yeah pretty rough. I mean, because he's always there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I was at MCD uh, four days ago, five days ago, uh, visiting that one niche that was on the liver transplant list. And uh, I thought he was there, and then he said, no, I'm actually coming there soon. And then I guess by the time I was gone, he had arrived. So. And not to be rude, but. MCB. That's not somewhere you go three times a day. I mean, I think I was there like no joke, like three hours. You, you got four if, different. If I'm on camera, can. please listen to this. Yeah. If your loved one is at MCB, tell me what. Don't just tell me what floor. Tell me what. We yeah. of it. But it was nice. I did get a good tour. <laughs> when I went upstairs, it was like I saw a bunch of babies, and I was like, okay, and they, and they jumped Thanks, all over me. Like, hey, what are you? I was like, oh, what's going on? You're gonna crush the babies. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, definitely Stephen. And then, uh, unfortunately, uh, the guy that I prayed with, well, there's a fortunate and an unfortunate. Unfortunately for his wife and his kid, but uh, Larry did, uh, uh, yesterday, uh, passed away. Oh. The guy that was on, um, that I went, yeah. But like I told him, I said, hey, I don't know if your name will ever be on a list in this hospital, but I can promise you as a believer, it's on the Book of Lambs. I have the so name one. I prayed with them and things like that. And Good. praise report. Uh, I think we're, our birthday's praise reports. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, here it's, doing it's Marty's uh, birthday today. So, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay. Old Marty. No, that's Jamie's. Jamie's Jamie. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Wrong, wrong, right family, wrong person. Yeah. Yeah. See? <laughs> All right. So, no, that'd be right. Be praying for uh, Lucy. Uh, she's. She said it was the weirdest thing. She's. I mean, she does. She walks, she does Pilates, all kinds of stuff, and as of like five days ago, just something started going on with her back, and it was like, I mean, it like took her down, down. Mm -hmm. Like, not like 15 minutes, she's able to yeah. stand, and then she has to sit. So it was just, but she's got some, she's got an MRI, she already had, uh, it's a bunch of stuff, but anyway. It's amazing, she's been um, seen this quickly. I, that's what I said, that's exactly what I said. I mean, she got seen like right away, and then she's like, "Yeah, the MRI is April 1st, which again, that's amazing. Yeah. With the stuff with Marty and all that, I mean, that's still a blessing. So, but that's it. Hey, no, what? Oh, never mind. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Yeah. Just, I, no, just a comment. Go ahead. I take comments. If it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna comment about Stephen. I feel so sorry for him. He and his mother were so close here. You know, he was, they would sit years ago and he'd have his arm around the whole deal church and have his head around. So yeah. He was definitely mama's boy. The only yeah. thing I'm trying to encourage Stephen with, and I do, and anybody that knows my heart, I hope you know it by now. Um, I want to, my biggest thing with him has been like once this passes, and I'm praying, you know, praying for him and things right. like that, is that he, taking that step, you got to take. That's a big you know, one for him. Yeah, you got to take it. You know, there's people that can help you, but again, I, I deal with a lot of this in recovery where we'll say, okay, I got, I got the job for you. Like, look, man, you got to show up to the job. Mm -hmm. I can't do the job for you. Right. Mm -hmm. So you got to. That's like my friend used to always say, and I've said this a million times and a bunch of times on the pulpit. If the Lord provides you a boat, He strongly suggests you row. Yeah. You got to do some action. You know, and that's not anything bad about Stephen. I think he's a great kid. Uh, well, he's not a kid, but, but he, uh, he needs encouragement. Yeah, just a little. He's, sometimes he's, we all need that little. I can get to the end of the plane. I just need you to push me. <laughs> so if you can lead, yeah, a lot needed. He yeah. really is, and I mean, you can agree, lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Mm. Kind of thing, you know, you just. Man, that gives me. Out. My dad used to say that so much. He I'm would as say old that. As your dad, yeah, he okay. would say that. And he'd say, uh, "Son, I, don't, I, I didn't understand this for the longest time, but he would always say." Son, it's like beating a dead horse. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, how would you do that? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <What's in case? laughs> Took 
took you a while to figure out. Yeah, it did. It did. <laughs> sorry, George. That's uh, all right. Any, any others? Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, again, we thank you for your love, your grace. We thank you for your word that we'll be studying about today. We thank you that we have an opportunity and, and a freedom to come to worship and to praise you. And uh, for our prayer list, Father, there always seems to be many needs, but the ones that have been mentioned, of course, have been Stephen and uh, Lucy and, and Marty and, of course, Jamie and Scott as he take care of her. And just ask you to be with them, Father, direct them in what they need to do. And, uh, others we might not know about. Uh, think about Maria and her family and just be with them in a special way. But Father, as we come to you today, just open our hearts, our minds to what you have for us. Uh, help us to draw closer to you, Father. And, uh, we need to be in your word each and every day as we see this message going on in our nation and in our world. And uh, We just ask for direction. We ask for, for wisdom and knowledge to know what to do, how to do it again, being in your word and meditating and knowing what you'd have for us. So, Father, just bless. Use us for your glory. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. All righty then. I'm going to start out. We're going to be doing a lot of verses today, but uh, anyway, we'll follow the best we can. Second Peter, I'm sorry, 1 Peter chapter 2. Verse 2 is where we're going to start. Um, I thought this was interesting. I guess this is, the guy that wrote this is the one that I guess it did the, the lesson plan, but it's interesting what, the way he started out. And he said, I study my Bible like I gather apples. First, I shake the whole tree that the ripest may fall. Then, I shake each limb. And when I had shaken each limb, I shake each branch and every twig. Then I look under every leaf. I search the Bible as a whole, like shaking the whole tree. Then I shake every limb, study book after book. Then I shake every branch, giving attention to the chapters. Then I shake every twig, or a careful study of the paragraphs and sentences and words and their meanings. And actually that was done by Martin Luther who wrote that. And I hope we do the same thing. We've got to be in God's Word every day. We need to meditate. We need to know what we expect of Him and of course what He expects from us. And He lays those things out. And as we, I think we were talking Sunday at Sunday School, that even though the Bible doesn't change, the situation in our lives change. We could read a scripture and got the meaning from that, but then we'll be going through something different to read that same scripture and it's a different meaning. And so God's an awesome God. His word is awesome. Amen. And we just need to, to be in that and to follow that, study that, to know what we are to do. So if you hadn't figured, we're look, talking about the Bible today, uh, some of the things we should be doing and why we do them. And so we're going to start in 1 Peter chapter, uh, yeah, chapter 2, verse 2, and it says, As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the Word, and that you may grow thereby. And again, I think folks here, it's nothing new that as babies we start off on milk, and then as we grow, we get into food, and then solid food, and then too much food. But... Uh, we need to get into God's Word and understand what God has for us. Uh, if we don't start at the basics, then we're not going to catch what's going on later on as we get into some, some well, I was going to say heavy Scripture, but what God would have us. So we need to start to learn and understand what God, who God is and what God does for us. And then in the same verse, uh, why do we need to know God's Word? Well, we need to know the Word of God in order to grow spiritually. And so if we're going to serve the Lord and, and to be the Christians we need to be, we need to understand what God's Word is all about. So again, we start with the milk and then we get into the, the food of the Scripture to know 
who God is and what God, again, wants us to do in our lives. And then, I was going to turn to these. Uh, if, if, uh, let's do this. If you want these Scripture verses, you can let me know. Uh, and we can make copies or whatever. But in verse, uh, in Psalms 19.7, it says, How is God's Word described in Psalms 19, verse 7? And it's, The law of the Lord is perfect. And of course, we know perfect is flawless. Yes. It's exactly what it's supposed to be. It means what it means. And um, we don't need to question that. We shouldn't question that. Uh, again, to know that, we have to get in, study, and meditate. Uh, how often should a Christian read and study the Bible? Well, Psalms 1, 1 through 3, tells us, in fact, I'll return to that one. Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither, and what, whatever he does shall prosper." There's another promise if we're in God's Word as we serve and, and honor Him and live the Christian life, it's going to prosper because we are in God's Word. Um, who should we depend on to help us learn the Word of God? And this is in John 14, 26. And it tells us that we need to depend on the Holy Spirit to help us Learn the Word of God. And I, I don't know, hope, have, everybody does things different, but either when I'm studying for a lesson or Sunday school or whatever, I pray, Lord, you got the material here. I'm going to go through it. And you, you put on my heart what you want me to say and need to say. And I'm sure Scott does the same thing through his sermon. It, what, what do I need to bring out? And so um, the Holy Spirit can help us do that. And of course, direct our lives as we study and meditate. You know what's so beautiful about that? When you do that, and, and it says, let, I preached it, I laid a request, you know, when you do that, when, and he knows our hearts, I know your thoughts from afar, he says, but when you do that, I, there's been times, and I don't know if the, if the camera captures it, whatever, but there's been times where that Holy Spirit would be literally, and I think this is the idea, ministering to me mm -hmm. as I'm pour, trying to pour it out. Yeah. Like it's just, it's sick. I've heard over the years different testimonies. Like say, they they go to prove the Bible wrong, and they end up getting saved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so that's where we need to be. And, and like I said, as as leaders or teachers, we need to bring forth God's word and pray what we need to to bring out. And uh, He will definitely do that. And of course, this is nothing new either. Who inspired the writing of Scripture? All Scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Yes, it was written by men, but it was through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit as they wrote. And uh, it, we, well, we don't need to question that. It's true. It's solid. It doesn't change. And we have to accept it for what it is. Um, all right. Um, and then I have a list of things here. According to these following passages, how will God's Word benefit you? So I'm going to, again, like I said, it's a lot of Scripture, but we'll go through these pretty quick. Uh, again, 1 Peter chapter, uh, chapter 2, verse 2, and it tells us God's Word feeds us and helps us grow. Again, let's talk about the babes in Christ. We have to start there, and then we grow and get more into God's Word that is being the meat of God's Word. And then in Psalms 119, 105, God's Word will guide us as a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Folks, our life, we don't understand it. Don't, maybe sometimes don't know which direction to go. 
God's Word is going to tell us if we'll get into it and study it and meditate on it. He explains everything. And um, anything we need to know about life, it's, it's right here. No question. And so, um, like I said, again, I know I'm kind of speaking to the choir. We should know, all know that and, and be into it. Yeah. And it's showing, I have to add this, uh, but it's showing others, because what George just said, I, I'm sorry, there was a time in my life where my dad would say that, and I'd be like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> nah, not everything, Dad, come on. <laughs> Surely it can't be everything. I mean, everything? And he was like, son, I'm going to keep praying for you. I said, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, because it was, I mean, it, it, it's... It really is. Like when you said that, it just jumped all over because it yeah, is everything. It's, 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 it's when people see that that aren't the believers that we're trying to meet where they are and say, look, try, do me a favor. What are you going through? Well, I'm going through uh, anger. I'm going yeah. through this. Wait, man. James 5, where it talks about patience and this and that, you know, and kind of lead them into that. And then sometimes people have called me back saying, wow, man. I didn't, even, I didn't realize that was. I was like, yeah, man. It's, kick the dust off that thing, brother. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Aren't you glad exactly. God gives us a memory? You can remember the times yeah. your dad tried to counsel it's with true. you and you just blew it off. Oh, yeah. And now it's all just yep. this all coming good back. Yeah. My nephew, and I think I've told this, uh, but my nephew's uh, doing a little. I mean, he's 15 years old. He's acting up a little bit. And, and, uh, I was talking to my yeah what I was talking to my dad and he was like yeah I knew someone like that and that old heavy metal posters and this and that but look how he turned out I was like wait you talking about me is that me <laughs> oh man yeah and then in Psalms one nineteen verses nine and eleven God's word can help us not to sin. And again, I was just thinking of, of the Old Testament, the, the examples that God gives us. Some were good and followed Christ, and some didn't. Some went against Christ. And uh, of course, those that repented, of course, have eternal life. And those that don't, then they end up in, in, in hell. And that's just, you know, you have a choice accept Christ or, or not. And so, as we read and study, read the examples, the things that these folks went through. Even if it was 2,000 years ago, we can learn from that if we'll stop and, and, and listen to what the Holy Spirit tells us. And then in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, God's Word can build our faith. And of course, that shouldn't be anything new. We have to be in God's Word to, to understand, to, uh, to know who God is. And again, to, to learn from that, to know how we're to live and to share God's Word that others can accept Him as Christ. Uh, and then Ephesians 6, verses 11 and 17, God's Word can help us live yes. in victory. Folks, we're not out there by ourselves. God's with us. If we don't see God, it's because we've moved away. And so we need to search our hearts, find out where we are, uh, but God never leaves us. He's always there for us. And um, pray that we recognize that. And again, the Holy Spirit can, can help us do that. Repent and get back with God where we should be. And again, it's very important to have that relationship. You might know God. A lot of people know God. But if you don't have a relationship with Him, we're in trouble. And so that's where we need to be. He gives us that victory. Um, and I love this because I used to use this in my Gideon uh, talk. Why is God's Word so, effect so effective? And that's Hebrews 4.12. It is quick, which means it's alive, powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword. Folks, you get in God's Word, it's going to cut you open. It's going to show you your sin. And of course, the more we grow uh, from the milk into the meat of the Word, it means we're going to be getting closer to the Lord. The closer we are with the Lord, the more flaws we see in our lives. And so, um, it will it will cut us open to know where we need to be and what we need to repent of. And that we can live the life He wants for us. And that we can serve Him in a better way. And then, what obligation do we have as Christians 
according to James chapter 1, verse 22. Christians have the obligation to be doers of the Word. Yes. Again, as Christians, we've, we've accepted Christ in our hearts and our lives, but if we don't share that, where are we? It's like taking your money and putting it under the, the mat, which uh, today might not be a bad idea, put it under the mattress. <laughs> share, <laughs> but, uh, it's a, share it or be an example of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And know the mission you're on. When I, I, I made it very clear with that uh, gentleman in the hospital. I said, look, man, we can talk about a lot of things. I pulled my little pocket. I have a witness in a pocket Bible. I said, but I came on a mission. You know, I, you know, and he knew right away, oh, wow, well, man, this is, mm -hmm. you know. And we, we read a little bit, talked to him, prayed a little, you know. And it, right. It's just knowing what, you know. Yeah, exactly. It's one thing to hang with the boys. It's another thing to say, hey, look. In case you don't go out of here, mm. where are you heading? Yeah. You know, because I mean, that's, and my dad, my dad said he's been in hospitals where a dying lady, uh, he sat there and witnessed and prayed the whole nine yards and she kept her eyes open and everything else. She said, you know what, there is something you can do for me. Take your effing Bible and your effing Jesus and get out of here. Mm. And he said, okay. Uh, What's the Bible say? Knock the dust off your feet. Yeah. Right. That's, I mean, that's you know, all of course, it upset him. But he did what he was asking. That's right. Yeah. The, mission's, the mission's clear. Yeah. Sad. We, we sow the seed and okay. we just pray that um, they'll listen to the Holy Spirit and accept Christ. But then you got those that are going to fight all the way. Yeah. And of course, if they don't before they die, then it's going to be too late. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it's, it's very important that we share that for sure. Uh, and then we're looking at um, obeying God's word proves, and in First John chapter two, three, and four, that one knows Jesus. It's very important again getting God's word, know who He is. Can you repeat that again? First John, no, oh. paragraph. What you just said, obeying oh. God's word. Yeah, proves that one. Proves. Okay. Yeah that one knows Jesus. And so the more we get in God's Word, the more we understand who He is. And His, of course we know that His, um, I can't hear the word, the reason God sent Him was to forgive us of our sins, to go to the cross, to shed His blood. And without that, we're, we're lost anyway. And so it's His love, it's His grace that we have an opportunity to accept Him and have eternal life. And so being in His God Word uh, will give us that we can know Jesus and what He's all about. The second thing it proves is that Jesus, and this is in Luke 6, 46, that Jesus is the Lord of our life. And we need to accept that. If we're going to be Christians and have eternal life and serve the Lord, we need to know that He will be Lord of our lives. You know, that's what so many people, even in the older days, I mean, they were there with Christ and a lot of people turned Him away. But we know that He is Lord and that He can direct our lives and that we can serve Him uh, in, in a good way and accept Him for who He is. And again, here right at Easter, it's the love that took Him to the cross. It's the love for us. And so, so many of us, he didn't even know at the time. Uh, of course, God knows everything. And so uh, we have to accept him as Lord. And then also the word proves uh, in John 14, 15, that one loves Jesus. So as we accept him and, and turn our lives over to him, we accept him for who he is. We love him for what he's done for us. If it wasn't for his mercy and his grace, where will we be? And so it's very important to get in God's Word. I can't say that enough. And hey, look, Harvey, Harvey's rubbing, on, rubbing off on me. He, he is. said grace and mercy. You know what I'm talking about. His grace and mercy. <laughs> That's right. we'll, have a, we'll have for time for that in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> uh, but we need to get in God's Word. We need to meditate every day. And, and study to know again what He has for our lives. And that's the only way you can know is to get in God's Word. And, and well, along with that, be in your local church. 
I'm not saying this might not be the one for you. Get in the church that teaches God's Word. Yeah. Get into the fellowship that we can help each other. We can lift each other up. And that's what it's all about. Um, we're not doing it on our own. Like I said, Christ is with us. But then as we're in the local church and we're in with other believers, we can help each other have strength of each other. And just some thoughts uh, as we wrap this up. As believers, we have the duty to the Bible to study it through. And like I say, it's an everyday thing. And if we want strength and guidance, protection for the day, we need to read God's Word every day. And then, duty to the Bible is to pray in it. We know how, how important prayer is. Um, and uh, you know, I don't think I need to say much more than that, but prayer reaches so many people. We, sometimes we can't be there, but that prayers can be there. And it's through Christ as He takes us to the Father that those prayers can be answered. And then, duty to the Bible is to work it out to know what we're supposed to do or how to do. And uh, God lays that out again in His Word. And uh, as Christians, where we ought to be. Like, uh, I was talking with Scott or somebody the other day, you know, you can't go down the road and somebody cut you off and you wave at them, tell them they're number one in your life, <laughs> yeah, and you try right. to witness to them. Yep. Yeah. It just doesn't work. I actually, uh, years ago, well, I didn't, I didn't do that, but years ago, I had a, a bit of a little bit of a road rage and sure enough, this guy was going to the same AA meeting I was going to. I was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you looked worse. Did you look worse to him or did he look worse to you? <laughs> yeah, you never know. <laughs> you look at each other in the eye and shake each other's hand when you got there. When you think about how quick that uh, anger can kick in, with, uh, like yeah. on the road or something like that, and then can you imagine like something real bad happening and saying, by the way, what do you do for a living? I'm a pastor. Couldn't you tell by my <laughs> <laughs> which, which leads us back to the statement you said mm. just before that. Pray without ceasing mm. means being, I don't mean you be on your knees, just, you know, focused on prayer. That means everything you do, yeah. be in an attitude of prayer. It, so as you're driving down the road, you can be talking to the Lord. And especially when the idiot pulls out in front of you that you have to slam on brakes for, you know. But, um, and that's hard to do. You know, I, listen, I raised four daughters, and I still think I've got a little bit of sense about me, but it wasn't always easy. I could just choke them out some days. But they all grew up in spite of me. I like what Bill Cosby said years ago. Talk to his kids. He said, I can take you out and I'll make more look just like you. <laughs> uh, anyway, moving on quickly. Uh, but we had, again, we have to be in, in God's Word. And then the, the fourth thing of duty to the Bible is to pass it on. We, we need to share God's Word. Like I said, so many folks out there that, that have needs, that are looking for the truth. And it's through God's Word that we can do that. Uh, I saw on Facebook, I think, again yesterday that a lot of these churches, you know, are bringing in the bands and all the stuff. It's, it's more of a big show than it is God's Word. I can't say every, everybody is like that because they're not. But we have to be careful. And again, God's Word will show us where we need to be and what's going on so we do know the difference. And so as we look at these today, I, I'm, I know it will probably review for most of us. We know how important the Bible is and how important it is to be in it, to know it, to live it, and then to share it as we live our lives here uh, as the last day approaching. And, you know, again, we, we talk about an awesome God. We talk about things that have happened. You know, God's in control, whether we understand it or like it or don't like it. But, you know, God's going to take care of His people. And so we have to do our part. Getting in His Word will help us to know what to do and how to do, what to say, how to say it. And of course, we've, we've talked about this many times that you know, you go someplace, somebody's having a bad day, but when you come in, they happen to unload on you. Um, just don't unload back. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm sure there's plenty of examples of that, but 
We need to show Christ through us, and people need to see Christ in us. No matter what's going on, you know, we have to be, I was going to say, the better person, but we have to be the one for Christ, that people can see Christ in us. And a lot of times, just being nice and different than some of the other folks will make a difference, and maybe they'll come up to you and ask questions or want to know what's going on. Why, why, how come your life is different than most people that come in here? Uh, and so, um, hopefully that will help us uh, get us back on track, stay on track. But just being in God's Word is very important. So, any questions or comments? I have one little comment, George. Yes, ma'am. Um, we think that our world today is, is so bad and we're going to hell in a handbasket. I'm reading now, my Bible reading is in the Minor Prophets. And I've almost read through the Minor Prophets. Go and read the Bible prophets and see what God is saying to His people through the prophets. None of them are following Him. None of the people are doing anything that they are supposed to be doing. And through His prophets, He's trying to say, if you don't do this, I am already going to do it. If I haven't done it, I'm going to. So in this day and time, let us understand, we serve the same God. It may be a little different situation, but we're serving the same God. He will do what He chooses to do in His time. And we need to ask for His will to be done, not ours. Yeah. Always, and I can't help it, always comes to mind. We have a, uh, Scott and myself have a guy that always talking about pre privilege. Mm -hmm. And that's that and other. Well, first of all, the Bible's not clear whether we're going to be pre-trib, mid-trib, or post-trib. Right. I know this, that God's going to take care of His people. That's I don't right. care when it is, or where it is, whether He takes us before or He takes us after. Yeah. He's going to be with us, period. Well, and it goes back to... I don't want to get on the... I want to get on this roller coaster quick. 24, 36 of Matthew. <laughs> Not... That's why when that gentleman said that, I'm sorry. Yeah. It, you're, you're incorrect. If you think you got the timeline, you think you got some imaginary rapture clock, then why does 2436 says, not the angels nor the sun? That's right. No. And we're not Greeks. We're not talking about the, the Amen, Greek, Scott. the sun. We're talking about the sun. It's nonsense. It's, just, it's nonsense. It's something that the devil can. I'm not even going to do it. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm going to get you off of it. I do know this that God will take care of His people Amen. no matter That's what. That's right. And so, again, we just need to be in His Word. Here's all the answers. Yeah. And look back, when I was talking about the Old Testament, look back at the times that God did forgive His people yeah. over and over and over and over again. And then He finally comes to the point where He sends His own Son Amen. to take Amen. care of us rotten right. sinners that have nothing to give whatsoever. He, he continues to watch over us. He continues to forgive us. And it's going right on through time right now. That's right. And I'm That's preaching just, my sermon for the moment. It's just our faith That's right. that we have to accept that knowing, knowing that He's going to take care of us. Yep. Yeah. And again, and I don't care what happens. Yeah. Well, like I said, if I'm, if I'm stuck around here for a while, He's with me. God's with me. Right. If I die, I'm going to be with Him. That's right. It's a win-win. It really is. Sorry. Right. <laughs> I can't lose. Uh, although I'm not ready to, to leave yet. <laughs> if He calls me, then it's going to get better. That's right. I like what Jay said. If UNC can take the title and then the Cowboys win the Super Bowl, he'd be cool with just <laughs> relaxing on his recliner and the Lord taking him. But so you can ready to go. I said, dude, I don't know about UNC. <laughs> The Cowboys, I can speak on it. You're gonna be around for a while. Uh, <laughs> uh, I went to New Park Crack. Park Crack National. How you say it? Chiropractor. That's it. And when I went in, I saw this Dallas flag. I don't know why it was there. And uh, later on, that was the first time I've been there, so we were talking. He says, you, you follow football? I said, yes, sir, a little bit. He says, uh, who you pull for? I said, Green Bay. And I said, I did see that Dallas flag in there. So, 
So, because I was just kidding with him. But uh, anyway. As he's got a hold of your neck. Yeah, I know. Yeah, he, really, uh, yeah, he twisted. Know. Green Bay just a little color. Made a little bit uh, here. And, uh. Well, I'm a Dallas fan in there with you. There you go. I'm a Dallas fan. Have been ever since I knew but what anyway, football was. Uh, we just, like you said, it, 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 and it's hard sometimes yeah. to put our faith in God. I mean, we, we see things going on, but again, get off the milk, get into the meat, yeah. and we understand what God can do and will do and is going to do. Like I say, it's His plan anyway, so yeah. no sense worrying about it or trying to change it because it's not going to happen. If you want to get a real laugh out of God, tell him your plan. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Thank you. Sure. All right. Any other? Oh. Yeah. I had someone that had visited me yesterday, and uh, she kind of reminded me real quickly of our pastor. She was going to an Episcopal church. And I don't know whether she had been talking to this woman about coming or if it was a stranger that had just come in, but after the service, I guess the woman must have made some commitment to the Lord. And one of the people in the church there went to her and said, now when you come back, don't be dressed like a prostitute. I'm just and I thought, but Scott, what is it? Don't... Oh, Scott, you dress like a prostitute. Well, that's why, yeah, and, and I think that's why we have to be so careful with. I told someone Wednesday night is it's a, it's a different format, and I, we have a guy who I love. His name is Arlo, and he's very, very knowledgeable in the work. Oh yeah, James. James and all. I mean, yeah. but he's not going to let you get away with. It. Like in other words, if I was to say out loud, "Hey, you know, there is a different way to get to heaven besides Jesus," he believe me, he would. You'd hear his voice. <laughs> well, what I think you're trying to, you know, and he's he's an interesting guy, but yeah, he's yeah, but he'll keep you on track, and and it's important uh, for people that are seasoned in the Word to yes, meet people where they are, but be careful. Yes. You know, don't. Yes. There's a reason we sing just as I am. He will accept us just as yeah, we are, yeah. even if we're dressed like a prostitute. But then as we learn to live for yeah. him, yeah. we will change the way we behave and the way we dress even. Yeah. Or we don't need people telling us. We don't need people, yeah. Yeah. not on his first visit. If that's, if that's not a way to just send him away forever, I don't know what is. Yeah. That's right. Well, remember, we're supposed to be balcony people. Right. And that means... Lifting people up. Don't be a basement person. Yeah. Uh, and it doesn't take much to drag somebody down. Yeah. Well, as always with me, Brother Dry, I listen to you and what you buy and I enjoy it. And uh, I get back in Romans. If you get Romans 5, you know, it's about by faith with me. And it reads also that therefore being justified mm. by faith, there it is. we have peace with God through our Savior Jesus Christ. Yes, That's me. That's what I was taught. And my grandfather, of course, you know, in the young day raised me, and he was he used to tell me, he wasn't an educated man, but he would say, You remember two things you remember by as a human being is a, is the problem you solve or the one you created. Mm. And he brought us up that way to try and solve problems, opposed to create problems. Mm -hmm. And faith. It's all about, I don't, for, I, I hear y'all, Joe and all y'all talk, but you come down to faith with me and believe. And that's, that's what I, I wouldn't be on this earth. It's, it's all about and how you treat people, other people. And most important thing, he always taught us that we are basically responsible for ourselves. Mm -hmm. I can talk to you, you can talk to me, but we're responsible for oneself. And when you're taught that, of course I went north, you stay with you. And faith is what keeps me going today. Now, <laughs> I'm going to tell you a little joke. I know you laugh at it. It's that this pastor, uh -oh. he was in a sermon down in, uh, not, not this pastor. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, was, he was on a sermon down in, uh, in the city, and it was that. At night, he came out, he wanted, he needed to go to the drugstore to pick up some supplies, some medicine he needed. But when he got out of service, 
the drugstore will close. So he asked a friend of his, where is the nearest drugstore? He said, well, there's one down here, a uh, few blocks. You got to go through a little rough neighborhood here and then get to it. He said, well, I have to go to it because I need this medication. So he's going down through there, he was driving through there, he, could, he, did, he couldn't find it. So he saw this fellow walking on the street. He blew his horn, come on here a minute, let me ask you a question, my friend. Where is the, where is the drug store that's in this neighborhood? He said, oh, he he said, I'm a pastor. Oh, Reverend, you make a right, next block, go down, make a left, make another left, the drug store is on the corner. And the pastor said to him, said, good, I'm glad you told him, said, I'm a pastor, you come to my church Sunday, and I'm going to show you how to be saved. And, and he said, okay, so the pastor said, uh, 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 you want to show me how to find God? He said, uh, how can you tell me how to be saved and find God? You can't even find the drugstore. That's good stuff. But you, you're exactly right. Faith is where it all is. That's all what it's all about. It's all about faith. About. Uh, yeah. all about faith. So. Uh, um, my, I always call my kids, because my kids, I don't know much about the grandkids, but they told them they all be good, all of them cut out well. No babies out of the way locked, no jail locked up, nothing like that. And <laughs> I'm going to tell you this, I'm going to quit. In my household, when I was bringing my kids up, candy was not allowed in the family. No candy. They could go to the store, the apple, orange, banana, peaches, anything they want, mm -hmm. no candy. Ask my daughter when you see her. She'll tell you. <laughs> I said, you, in Carolina, we had to with our teeth because down there you didn't, you didn't have a problem. So, thing to do with your tongue, that Y'all would not have bad teeth in this family with sweets. And when you see my daughter, he asked about, she'll tell you, she said, Daddy, I was 14 or 15 years old before I could eat a piece of candy. Oh, my goodness, thank you. <laughs> but I love the Jeff all of them. But uh, this Sunday, my old church called me, some people coming down. I told them about the pastor. But they had the program Sunday. And they, uh, one of the members said to me, she said, Mr. Day, I ain't heard you done the song, because my team song, I would trust in the Lord. So I'm coming to that church Sunday. I'm bringing some friends with me. Oh, good. I would, since you left, I have not heard you saying I would trust in the Lord. I said, well, y'all know the song, don't you? So I, I called Diane. Diane, you know that song? Diane said, I don't know that song. I said, what? I've I done it at the church before, you know, so, but, so they come, half a dozen of them will come Sunday, and they want to come down and hear the, pastor, the young pastor preach. I told him we have a pastor there, he's a, sick, he's a junior. I said, junior. I called him junior. I'm a short of junior. And so we have a good long conversation. They come in, before they come down Sunday and, help, and be in the service with us. I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I don't have to travel as much. I'm back down the road now. We burned a couple of people up north. And I'm back home for a while now. And so I'm off the road. So looking forward to being here Sunday. If nothing else happen. I appreciate your time. But I always get, if, if you look at the Bible, I'm in, I'm in Romans chapter 5. The first verse is always tell us about the faith, justified faith of God. That, that's me. That's all. That's, that, uh, whether you're in, accepted or not, that's just who I am. All about faith. If I can't do that, I have nothing. Without God, I have nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And uh, so I thank you. Thank you for being here and accepting my wife and my daughter and I. And my daughter told me the other day she came down here and worked with y'all. I think you always talk about that lady. Yeah, she, she yeah we do too, just not like that. She, <laughs> no, <I'm kidding>. <laughs> <laughs> she said something about Miss Paula Hill. She was doing something with some candy or something. Is that right? Yeah, we were <laughs> She would tell me about yeah. you and her were doing something with some candles, so. yeah. yeah. and for the how for the uh, she helped Easter. Us with the big Easter yeah. egg blast. Because my daughter was telling me we thought Easter eggs mm -hmm. was your boiled mm -hmm. eggs like old time to eat the color pan for the mouth. She said, "No, y'all stuffed these or something." Yeah, those plastic yeah, ones plastic like that eggs, one right there. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, so yeah. The yeah. eggs are on strike. That would be pretty yeah. funny to see, though. The kids. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't know she was explaining. <laughs> I think it was blowing all the pieces. Oh, okay. Scrambled eggs out the front door. Y'all gonna have this Saturday or something?
Well, yeah. it's going to rain. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll get to that. We're going to have to right. 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 It's going to rain, so we're probably not going to have it this Sunday. Oh, okay. I see. Oh, right. so, yeah, the rain is coming here. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll come up with that. So, we're going to figure it out. We're trying to figure it out. We're trying to figure it out now. Isn't that week spring break? The week after Easter is spring break. Oh, okay. The first week of April? Yeah. Well, I think they have to go to school on Friday. Well, do what? Good Friday. Good Friday before we used to have to go to school. Alrighty. Well, like I said, I hope that's actually nothing new to us, but uh, just be sure to get in God's Word. Um, uh, let's, let's pray. Father, give me just love you. Thank you for loving us. You went to the cross for us. And we know as we're in that season that you not only hung on the cross for us, shed your blood, but on the third day, Father, you arose to be with God in heaven. We thank you for that. It's your love, your faith. Your mercy that we have that. We just thank you, knowing that one day we'll be with you. So, Father, just be with us. Be with all the churches that, as uh, they speak, Father, they'll speak the truth uh, of your resurrection and what this is all about. And uh, that we set the Easter Bunny back on a shelf somewhere and that we just honor and praise your name in all that we do. So, be with each church. Be with their church. Be with the uh, egg blast, whatever we can work out uh, so we can invite people in. Thank you for Brother Har uh, Harvey and has his friends coming. And, uh, we just thank you for that as we open the door so everyone that wants to come in, Father. So just bless, use us for your glory. In Christ's name, amen. amen. amen.